Hey, it's Jason from Skinny Research and Development, and today what I want to do is take a look at the A-Stable Multivibrator again. In the last video, we looked at how the multivibrator worked and what was happening at the output. And we also looked at how you could change the frequency of that output, but we didn't look really in depth at it. So what I want to do today is take a look at how we could physically change that output frequency and also change the duty cycle at the same time. So let's take a quick look at the schematic to remind ourselves how things are operating and then we'll look at the breadboard and see what we can change to adjust the frequency in the duty cycle. So last time what we said is the output of this A-stable multivibrator is controlled kind of by these formulas here and by C1, R2, and C2 and R3. What we said was there comes a point when this thing is kind of blinking these LEDs back and forth uh, where C1 is going to drop on this side to a negative voltage. Once that occurs, then C1 needs to charge back up to almost around a one volt level before it can turn on this opposite side by tripping the base on this transistor. What we can do is we can see that R2 is going to control how long it takes for this side of the capacitor to charge back up. Also, the other thing that controls that is how large C1 is. And so we can put that in a formula and we have done so down here where C1 and R2 are multiplied by 0.69 in order to get the time needed uh, that it's going to take to, to charge up to that one volt level. So what that means is we should be able to change C1 and R2 in order to increase or decrease the amount of time it takes for that charge up to occur. Likewise, we can do the same thing over here at T2 with C2 and R3. And by adjusting those, we can adjust the duty cycle and we can adjust the frequency at which things are occurring. So let's take a look at that. So I've not changed uh, this setup since last time. I still have uh, 1K ohm resistors here for R1 and R4. Uh, for R2 uh, and R3, they're at 220K. And then I have 10 microfarad capacitors uh, that are right there beside them, these two little blue capacitors in here. So they're still blinking kind of at the same rate. So what we want to do is first let's try to speed that up and let's change the frequency a little bit. So I've got two 100K uh, resistors here, so I'm going to switch those out with the 220K. And you can immediately see there's a change. There's a change here uh, with our LEDs and also a change over here uh, with our oscope. You notice our frequency has gotten a good bit faster. We're up to almost a full hertz. And things are generally doing what we expected them to do. They're, they're starting to get quicker and faster because we have now less resistance there for R2 and R3. So now I'm gonna switch it back to the 220 K ohm resistors. And instead, this time what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch out the capacitors. So I've just switched these out to 0.1 microfarad capacitors and they're blinking so fast that you might not be able to tell on the camera that they are uh, blinking at all. They might just look solid. Uh, but so that means we're going to go to the O-scope over here and I am going to take and zoom in on the time base. So now what we have is a frequency that's a lot faster because we dropped the capacitance of those two capacitors down a ton. And so we're seeing you know, a frequency that is uh, matching that. So now I'm going to switch that back. We're back again now to the 220k ohm and 10 microfarad capacitor. And we mentioned a little bit about duty cycle and how we might be able to change that up. Since we can individually adjust the charge time for each one of these capacitors, they don't have to be balanced. So we could take and say change out one of these 220k resistors for 100k and leave the other side imbalanced. So that means one side is going to charge uh, really quick and the other one not so much. The main thing is that we've been able to adjust the duty cycle by creating this imbalance. In one output, it's on for a little bit of time and then off for the rest. And then on the, uh, the opposite output, we have where it's off for a little bit of time but then on for the rest of the time. And we can even show this in a more ridiculous fashion if we wanted to by trading out that capacitor. So I'm going to take and reinsert the capacitor we had in before the 0.1 microfarad. And then I'm going to reinsert the 220 just so it doesn't get too fast. And you might see just a, a small little blink there. And we can open this up on our oscope a bit. And now we have a duty cycle that looks rather ridiculous, but you can see that on one it's on for a short amount of time, the other one it's off for a short amount of time. 
and we have a, a fairly large imbalance in this case. So just wanted you to see that the output of the multivibrator isn't always just a square wave that's perfectly symmetrical, that you can adjust the frequency of that wave, you can adjust the duty cycle of that wave if you play around with it a little bit. If you insert some potentiometers in here, you could probably get some really interesting behavior there as well. If you have any comments or questions regarding the behavior of the multivibrator, just leave them down below. And as always, uh, any schematics or descriptions or visual aids will be uh, down in the links uh, below in the description. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.